Where's the music? <laughs> Cue music. There we go. <laughs> we, we are so cheating. We don't dance. No. I dance. She dances, yeah, yeah. I've always been a big dork. I can't, can't, can't do it. Anyway, happy Wednesday. Good morning. Hey, Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. How you doing this morning, Facebook world? This is Hump Day with Sean and Faith. I'm sorry, Wednesdays with <laughs> Sean and Faith. Hey, just so you guys know, um, too, because there was somebody, um, somebody that watches the videos that, um, We'd never met in person before, and Faith, Pastor Faith uh, met her, but she said, you're really into anything. that dude, right? You dig him. <laughs> and I told her, yeah, this dude is uh, is my husband, um, and Pastor Sean and I just wanted to share we'll be married next month, 23 years. Whoop, whoop. It's true. Uh, fun fact, I met Sean when I was 14, so I've known this gentleman for quite a while, and we have six amazing children, uh, ranging from the ages of 5 to 19. So there's a little info on us. So yes, we're staff members and we are really into each other. Yeah. I adore him most of the time. <laughs> What's the percentage on that? Like adorability, like hump? Really? You're going to do that? <laughs> 80%? 60 What? What is it? Tell all the Facebook world. What percentage of the time do you adore me? <laughs> I'm not adoring him right now. Aww. Yeah. It's so adorable when you like say 95%. that. 95%. Okay. That's good. I'm on glad, a good day. Glad we're real and authentic here at Wednesdays with Sean and Faith. Um, yeah, but we have been married for, for 22 years. And I don't know, if any of you guys like Cedar... Do you like Cedar Point? I love Cedar Point. Yeah, I do too. Big perk, <clears throat> Cleveland. If you move to Cleveland, you will be so close to Cedar Point. It's amazing. If you like roller coasters. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We, we love that stuff still. I mean, we're getting old, but not that old yet. And so um, for our birthdays, the last couple of years, we've gotten passes for Cedar Point. And just like can't wait to, to go. This past Monday was the first Monday that was open. We had Mondays off. And so we went and we chilled. And we had a good time. And I'm... it was fun. Yeah, it was a really good time. Um, it was an amazing time, actually. It's always fun riding the roller coasters for the first time. And just kind of being there. But one of the things I almost felt kind of um, guilty, or I wonder what people were thinking. Um, we, how do I say this? The passion for between us has gotten greater over the years. And we were standing in line, we held hands, and um, we kissed. Not too much, because, you know, when we first got married, there we were at a water park, and we were kissing and some lifeguards, somebody walked up and said, hey, this is a family park. You guys should get a room. Why are you doing that here? You guys are gross. Get out. And she started yelling at us, and it was horrible. And I cried for like three days. None of that's true, except for the part that she did come up and say. Now he's got a phobia of kissing me in public, so, you know, in case we offend somebody. Yeah, so, but we, um, I just kind of felt, I wonder if people are thinking like, oh, of course, they're like holding hands. They've only been married for like a year. <clears throat> and I got to thinking about like what makes what makes that because when you first get married there's this kind of freshness and there's this passion there's this hotness that people see like around you like oh they must be like really in love and it's almost even the very beginning even through the beginning, the beginning of marriage it's like a um, um, it's immature still because you've not really been through through much you've not been through the fire you've not yeah. been through a whole lot together and so while it's there and it's real it's not tried and, and true yet. Mm -hmm. And while I don't discount, I think that's great. Um, at some point, the honeymoon is over and you realize, she realized that um, eventually um, I brought it in my baggage. I'm like, hey, there's all this stuff I forgot to tell you about and I'm moving it into our house. And she's like, what is all this and where did it come from? And um, I had a bunch of beads, like we said, a bunch of stuff that was just kind of in my life that we um, didn't share before marriage and now hey here let's open the suitcases and deal with all this stuff that I'm gonna throw on you <clears throat> and um, sometimes you know she she did that to me a little bit too not quite as much as I did to her um, but um, then you have to work through it and there's a time in between that sometimes you never get the passion back because it's not intentional enough and I'm doing a lot of talking 
I guess some other things I want to say, but you feel free to interject anytime you want. Okay. Um, but I think that, and it's like this with our relationship with God too. Like in the very beginning, you're a new Christian, you realize the extent of maybe your sin, and you realize actually not really the extent of your sin, you realize how, how big God's grace is, mm-hmm. how big his love is for you. Mm-hmm. And there's an excitement, there's a passion that comes with that, and it's almost dangerous in some regards. It's like a fire that's not contained. It just burns everything that's around it. What good for bad, I don't care. I'm on fire for Jesus, and we're going to do this. Yeah, it's good. Um, but then you realize after you've been, because, you know, once you get saved, once you become a Christian, it's not like all of a sudden um, that fire is going to stay there for us. To, not everything in your life becomes roses and cherries and unicorns and rainbows and whatever else you want to stick in there. Um, Jesus actually promised, in this world you'll have trouble. In this world, the one thing I can promise, Jesus says, you're going to have, you're going to have trouble. But it's that trouble that actually draws us closer to Christ. It makes the relationship that we had in the beginning actually more real, and it becomes our choice as to whether we want this thing to still be powerful, still be on fire, still be the way that it used to be, because all of us have this used-to-be thing. This used-to-be relationship that, you know, I love how we used to be. I love how it used to feel. I love the way this church used to be. I love the way this relationship or this job or, this, or these kids. At least I love the way these kids used to be, and now I just want to leave. I, whatever, whatever it is, that there's always a used-to-be. And it's like that in family. But the beauty doesn't come. The beauty doesn't come until you've been through the fire and you've chosen, I'm not going to give up no matter what. I am in this for the long haul. And if I'm going to be in this for the long haul, then I'm going to love it. (laughs) I'm going to enjoy it. And those moments where it's just like, this is so hard in a relationship, in a marriage, if you ask anybody that's happy and in love, if you ask anyone that's happy and in love, Mm -hmm. there was a point in their lives where they thought, I want to leave. This is not what I signed up for. But they chose to stay in it. Yeah, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's it's one of the greatest illustrations of faith. I mean, you go to the altar, you you know, you are there, you're committing to an imperfect person, a person that has flaws, a person that is broken in some way because they're human, and you are committing, you're saying, for better or for worse, until death do us part, in sickness and in health, right? Rich or poor, like we, we commit to that. And you know, true love sustains the fire because we all know that you know there is a there's a deficit in in commitment in, in marriages and in our world, um, which you know our uh, that deficit has impacted teenagers, it's impacted children, it's impacted and you know and of course God is a restorer. I mean God is a restorer. But Pastor Sean, I just want to share and encourage you today if you're struggling in your relationships, if you're struggling in your marriage. I mean Pastor Sean. And I, for 22 years, have been in this thing called marriage. And we have fought, and we still argue, we still have our moments of tension. But it's those moments of tension that ultimately uh, help us to grow and help us to reflect either our garbage on one another or Christ. And that has been an amazing, amazing thing. And I want to say, you know, I think about Jesus and how that true love that he showed us. I mean, Jesus went through the fire for us. He went through the fire for you. He took upon all of your sin. You know, he paid the price to have you as his bride. I love how Jesus, uh, you know, uh, relates to the church as the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. And there's a love that that he has for you that nobody ever, um, there's no one in this earth or planet that could love you like Christ. Um, It's an amazing love. But when when your relationship, even with the Lord, is tested and tried, you can either become more connected to God, you can either press in to his, his power, to his love, or you can disconnect. And it's the same in our marriages. We can connect more with one another and we can forgive and we can love. And with that love that, that only comes through commitment. It's not a love, it's not a feeling. You know, I love a, a recent um, illustration and you know, as we had our mom panel this past Sunday talking about Jesus is my everything. Um, I talked a little bit about um, how feelings are indicators, they're not dictators, and they shouldn't dictate our decisions, and especially in our relationships and our marriage. You know, our feelings come and go. You know, you can feel in love one day, and you can feel out of love the next. 
you know, you can, like Pastor Sean was saying, you can be, um, you know, happy with your children, and then uh, in a moment you can just be very frustrated with them. So I think we're all, we can all relate on that. Um, but there, that honeymoon season does go away, whether it's in your relationship with the Lord or it's in your marriage relationship. It, ta- it's, it really takes perseverance, commitment, forgiveness. and Yeah, but the good news is we have an opportunity, and I think this, I think that the, for, the, the latter, the honeymoon stage that comes later in life, can actually be more powerful than the one that began the relationship in the beginning. Yeah. The problem is it just takes a lot of, you have to go through a lot to get there. You have to be very intentional about what you do and make that decision. It's just like our relationship with Christ. The more we give of ourselves, the more we sacrifice, and it's really not, in, in the end of the day, it's not really a sacrifice, but the more that we give of ourselves, the more that we have the opportunity to have him take over. In our relationships, it's kind of the, the same thing. Yeah. Our relationships, the more that we are able to give of ourselves, the more healthy our relationships become. If we're both, have you ever seen that where they're both giving? Both, both people in a relationship are giving sacrificially. It's just, it's beautiful. And I think that's more. That's a, that's a more. That's a more amazing fire than the one of a couple that's just falling in love for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to read one scripture, and then we can talk about a couple other things here. Um, it's uh, Psalms ninety-two. I was thinking about this yesterday. It's talking about the church, but there's some other cool things along with this. Is the righteous will flourish like a palm tree? They'll grow like cedar of Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. So if you're planted in the house of the Lord, then it says, it says this, that you'll flourish in the courts of our God. They will stand and bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. And there's definitely a, um, the major context here is the church. We say planted in the church. Um, like a family, you work things out and you work, you work together and there's dis- disagreements and that's completely fine because you work past them and you grow closer as, as a church family and you begin to love each other even, even more. But in our relationships, if we stay planted in our relationship with one another, committed to one another, then it says, I, I think this is the same, same thing because really we, we are the church. The church is not a building. It's, it's people. And if we stay planted in this relationship together, I think two things will happen. We will flourish, three things. We'll bear fruit, which we've borne six fruit already, and it'll stay fresh and green. It'll be fresh. It'll be like new. Mm. The only way to have that is to stay planted. So you got anything to say concerning, because I know we're coming up 10 minutes here, anything to say about Jesus is my everything. What we talked about this weekend in the Moms panel, what, what are some of your favorite things that was mentioned there? Yeah, we had a really great time um, if, if you were... Uh, weren't able to be there Sunday. You can listen online. It'll be um, it'll be online by this evening. Um, <laughs> but I just I love that the women that shared the moms. You know, we all had you know something very much in common, and is that that is that you know we've struggled with guilt. We've struggled with um, with you know things in motherhood that all of us struggle with. Struggle with failure. Struggle um, you know with our time, and it's. It goes back to um, the, the amazing joy of being a mom, you know, and, and the truth versus the lie. How the enemy, we talked about in First Peter 5, 8, how the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. And he wants to devour your self-worth. He wants to devour, you know, your joy as a mother, your joy as a wife, your joy just yeah. as an individual. You know, he wants to rob you of your dreams and he wants to tell you you can't. And the great news is anything that comes against your mind that is negative, the opposite is true because all the enemy can do is lie to you. And the truth is, Jesus is, we've been talking about Jesus is in our series. Jesus is the truth. And the truth is, is that you are, you are loved, you are valued, you are worthy of love, of the greatest love, the greatest story ever told was that a perfect God came for you. Jesus wants to be your everything. Yeah. And that's the thing as a mom, and we walked away from that panel on Sunday with that confidence as a mother, that confidence as a daughter of God, that, you know what, my confidence is not in myself. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Uh, <laughs> um, now we're being too churchy, sorry. No, but, Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> Glory be to God. You yes. preach, sister. But Jesus is everything that you need. Thank you, baby. Fill in the fire. 
But Jesus is everything that you need. If you need hope today, he is hope. If you need healing today, he is healing. If you need strength today, <laughs> he is strength. Sorry. Settle down. <laughs> Um, I love it's true. it, but but Jesus wants to be your everything, and and that's why we do these we do these um, Shine in Faith Wednesdays because we know we believe that Jesus is the hope of the world, and we believe the church is the hope of the world. And hope, actually, I love it in the Hebrew. It means rope. You are somebody's rope today yeah. to heaven. You are somebody's hope today, and we are to take our hope and take that rope, and we are to to you know, reach out to people and be available to people. And I want you to know today, if anyone, if anyone has, um, has hindered you, I am sorry and you are loved. I want to remind you today that it's nothing you can do to earn the amazing love of God. There's nothing you can do to lose his love today. But we want you to know that you are loved and there's an amazing hope available to you today through Jesus. Amen. So. With that, we should pray. Yeah. I think we hit our 10 also, minutes. Also, just in case you're interested, um, everything here in the past episodes can be seen at venue.church. Just go to media and click on Wednesdays with Sean and Faith, and it's all it's all there. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, love you guys. Love you. You're going to pray too? Thanks for go. hanging out with us. Great to see everyone. Megan, Blair, Zayas. We love you guys. Pam. Yeah. Father, we come before you, God. We just give you all the praise today for another day. Today is a new day. And it says that every single morning that you put a crown of love and compassion on us, that every single morning that you pour out your mercies. And we're so thankful for that today. And I pray for every single person watching this video, God, that they would not for a second doubt your love for them, your, your plan for them, and your dream for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. We will see you next Wednesday or Sunday if you're in town. God bless. Love you. Love you.